RuneScape is a game where you're kind of given the freedom to play how you want. After a pretty quick tutorial, you're dropped off in the starting town of Lumbridge and left to explore. Don't get me wrong, there's some newer quality of life changes that can help guide your journey, but for the most part, you create your own path. So how on earth can I be playing it wrong? Well, even when a game barely holds your hand, it doesn't mean that there isn't an optimal way to play. The meta, or most effective tactics available, I had no idea this was an acronym, I thought it was just a word, but apparently this is what it stands for. Anyway, the meta tends to appear in almost any game soon after it's released. In RuneScape's case, the meta might be the best weapon to use against a boss, or the most efficient way to train a skill. Often, metas might change over time with updates of the game, Certain methods become less viable and others more, but I'm currently playing in my own little world, free of metas, efficiency and optimization, and I'm having an absolute blast. Now, I want to clarify, I don't think efficiency, metas or optimization are actually a bad thing. For the majority of the player base, playing in the most efficient way possible is enjoyable, pushing the boundaries of what's possible and achieving incredible feats, but for RuneScape, I personally always struggled playing this way. Before I started my current journey, I'd log into my account, think of something to do, then think of the process to learn the most efficient way to do it, and just that thought alone would stop me from even attempting it. I know it sounds backwards, but even as a below average skilled player, I would look at an upcoming challenge and think to myself, if I can't do this in the most efficient way possible, what's the point? I don't understand why I felt like this, but I did, and what would I end up doing instead? Standing at the bank for about half an hour, and then logging off. Well, not anymore. My current journey of playing RuneScape without guides or access to the wiki has completely flipped this perspective. There's no alternative now, I just dive headfirst into something without knowing if there's a better way out there, and I'm loving it, and you'll see exactly this in today's episode. I take on one of the hardest skills to train as an Iron Man, Herblore, and with no idea how to be efficient, I dig up incredibly slow gathering methods that have almost definitely been surpassed by newer methods that I just don't know about. So let's get into it. But first, roll the intro. I'm trying to complete every quest in old school RuneScape without the use of guides, plugins, or the wiki on an Iron Man. Oh yeah, and this is my first Iron Man. This is unguided. We're currently on a journey to unlock fairy rings. As part of Fairy Tale Part 1, we've been tasked with finding a Valencia Moss and a Snapdragon. And without access to the wiki, this became one of my toughest challenges yet. The Valencia Moss took some time, but I remember the location of this herb, which is found in the Jungle Potion quest. But now onto the Snapdragon. Trying to put off training my most hated skill, farming. I tried a number of different ways to try and get my hands on this herb. Unfortunately, none worked. Eventually I caved and trained my farming from 38 to 62 at Tithe Farm, only to realise right at the last minute that I needed 59 herb lords to actually clean the herb, and I was currently only level 55. So, now it's time to train some herb lore. Herb lore on this account has been tough. Without access to the wiki, I never know the most optimal route to 1. Gather herbs, and 2. Gather secondaries. The majority of my XP gained in this skill was actually via the reward from completing the Legends quest, so I've avoided a lot of this pain. But now I have to tackle it head on, so I needed a plan. This is the herb lore plan. Now, after spending weeks trying to find a snapdragon, I've been doing all sorts of activities that gather herbs, like killing chaos druids, opening herb boxes and trading goutweeds into sandview. So I knew I had some herbs in the banks, but I needed to take stock. The first step of this was to clean every grimy herb I had, which whilst also giving a nice little bit of herb lore experience also helped me to make sure my count of herbs was correct. So now we clean them all, we can actually take stock. That meant counting all of my herbs and all of my secondaries. It was at this point where I quickly realised why I hated herb lore so much, the secondaries. I had none. Let me introduce you to my amazing creation, the Inventory Spreadsheet. This was somewhere for me to keep track of what herbs and secondaries I had. Let's talk through it. So, the first column is simply my herbs, and how many I have. The next few columns show the secondaries I needed to make the potions. Most only have one option, but a couple have a few. For Avento, for example, I could use snake grass to make fishing potions, or Mortmire fungi to make super energy potions. This is an easy decision, as super energy potions just sounded so much more useful than fishing potions. So collecting Mortmire fungi it is. For Irrits, it's between Eye of Newts to make super attack potions, and Ground Unicorn Horns to make super anti-poisons. Both potions are useful here, so I'm going with super attacks, as the Eye of Newts are so much easier to get. So. Using this spreadsheet we now have this, a list of secondaries we need to collect, and how many of each. Well, now there's nothing else left to do, it's time to get collected. I decided to take on what I thought might be the most time consuming first, limpwort roots. We had a couple of seeds in the bank so the first point of call was to plant these, and then we moved on to the only other way I know how to get limpworts, and that's killing hill giants. Yep, this is the best method I know. I'm certain there must be a quicker way, but this is all I'm aware of, so this is where I spend the next however many hours it'd take me to gather 260 limbs. Let's go. What in the f is that? Oh, is that the reanimated thing from Insold Heads? I've never done that before, but I think that's what it is. I just had a giant key, and I was just about to go in here and kill this guy. Then I just saw that fucker come out of the ground. That looks so cool. 
Anyway, yeah, I was gonna go down here and do the giant key thing because my assumption is maybe there's a drop. I mean, I have no food on me, but I think I should have to just kill him really quickly. He might not have any food in him, but that doesn't need to be said for you too. Not with today's sponsor, Factor 75. Eat stress-free with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Involving no run to the shops and dinner prep, Factor's meals are ready to eat in just two minutes. With a menu of over 30 choices with options for every type of foodie, you'll never find something you don't want to eat. Personally, I find dinner prep to be one of those things I always lack inspiration for. Thinking of things to make, getting all the ingredients and actually making the food, Factor takes all that stress away. So I can focus on what's important, unlocking fairy rings. Really? I just want this grind to be over, man. Yeah, but like, more important than food? <clears throat> anyway, Factor also understands that life isn't always routine. You can change up your order every week and pause and reschedule your deliveries anytime. Perfect for a flexible lifestyle. Get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month's orders using my link. Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code with your phone. Thanks to Factor75 for sponsoring today's video. Anyway, back to this massive hill giant. My assumption is that he might drop loads of limp work roots or something because of him being a massive hill giant. Anyway, I think my plan is working. He's not doing any damage to me right now, and I'm able just to kill him with Protect Melee. So I think any giant key I get, I'm just going to come in here and send it. Cosmic, 84 Cosmic, and then Soul Giant Head. Should I be keeping these in Soul Giant Heads? Maybe. He doesn't respawn, does he? I'm pretty sure I need to leave and go back out and then come back in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is the way. So yeah, anytime we uh, get a giant key, we will just... Uh, or does it respawn? Are you sure you want to leave the lair? I think so, because otherwise you could just get one key and stay here forever. Yeah, let's exit the lair. Um, yeah, we'll just be sending that every time because that was really quick and easy. And maybe there's hopefully some sort of drop of Limpwet roots on there. You never know. Could be completely wrong, but it'd be great if there was. But yeah, so far we've been at this for a little while. Um, we've got about... 15 limb work roots so it's taken a little bit of time but you know there's nothing else we can do i have no idea any other source of limb work roots i've got my other ones growing but that's about it so yeah this might take a while three is that it you know got six in the last one bloody hell that's a bit of a scam that is i can't remember if i planted one in this falador patch hoping that i did but we'll go and check it out and see if we did Oh, we did, I think. I can see one in the distance, although I know it bugs out a little bit sometimes. Yeah, it looks real. Alright, let's grab this. Well, fucking hell, that makes up for it. I don't even know what noise I just made there, but that is eight limpwort roots from one patch. Right, okay, cool. So we have 17 here, so let's just head back to the bank. I've been killing a bunch of hill giants in the background, in between these runs. I haven't got an exact kill count, unfortunately, because I've been doing some of it on mobile and some of it on desktop. So I'll probably guess around 3k kills overall. But we've ended up with 258 limpwort roots, which is very, very nice. So I need limpwort for Quams and Taromin. So my stack might have gone up slightly because I was picking up some from hill giants, but 258 is easy enough for now. Once to get a rough kind of idea. I wanted 260, so we're close enough to, to pack that in. Um, Right, next on the list is Unicorn Horns. I need 94 of those, um, so let's go and kill some Unicorns. Whilst he heads over to Unicorns, I just wanted to say thank you for the amazing support on the series. We've just recently hit over 60,000 subscribers, which absolutely blows my mind. And now I've got a new goal of hitting 70,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy the content, it'd be massively appreciated if you hit that sub button. Thank you. All right, back to Unicorns. Okay, so we've been killing a nice amount of Unicorns. I think we are up to... 123, so I think I've overshot it slightly actually. We only needed 94. Oh well. And I need to grind these up into horn dust, which we have here, so we've actually got more than 123 in total. They are the two longest, I think, to get. The next one is Mortmire Fungi, which I've not done before. And I believe I need the sickle in the same way that I did in the quest. This sickle here. And I cast Bloom in the swamp. So let's head over to Mauritania, cast some blooms. Oh, hello. Mysterious old man, is this a maze? Nope, it's a spinach roll. Um, and we need 95 of these, so we're going to need to make at least four trips for this. But I don't think it's going to take too long, to be honest. I'm hoping that my prayer points are enough to fill in an inventory, but I don't know if they are. I can't remember how much prayer it drains per cast. Uh, it's quite a long walk that I'm having to make. It's pretty much the same walk that I would actually have to make for Barrows. The whole reason I'm doing this is to avoid this walk. But I don't mind. It's not too bad. So we're going to do this for a bit. Hopefully be back in a minute when we've got 95 or more Mortmire Fungi. So just finishing up the last inventory here, uh, I've been using this little spot because I saw a couple of other people doing it. I don't know if there are bots or not, but they were standing here. So I don't know if this is like the most optimal place to stand. I don't really know what dictates if it spawns or not. I think it's just like lucky dip because like sometimes I'll get three 
and then sometimes I'll get one as we just saw there. So yeah, I don't really know what controls that, but this has only taken like five minutes because fortunately our 50 prayer points seem to be just like the perfect amount to get a full inventory if you get kind of lucky. Uh, and there, I mean, we've still got, you know, eight prayer points left here and we've got full inventory. So that's all we need. So let's head back to the bank, drop these off. And we needed about 95 of these. And I think with this, we should now have, yeah, 100, perfect, right, cool. So that is another secondary ticked off the list. Next up, I think it is just buyables. Oh no, that's a lie. We've got toad legs. Let's do toad legs now. So I'm pretty sure toad legs are in the gnome stronghold. So let's head over that direction and go and pick some up. We only need about 24 of these, so we can just do one inventory and then be done with it, which is nice. The fuck is that? Who's this person? This person is new, isn't she? Who are you and what are you doing? I'm Abigailer from Mauritania. It's a terrible place, run by the vampires. They visit the towns and collect everyone's blood for food. I tried for years to escape with my son, Suro, to make a better life for ourselves in Missilin. I scraped together enough money to bribe a boatman to get us out. The journey was tough, so men in pink hoods attacked our boat, shouting at us to go back where we belonged and to keep out of their country. In the struggle, the boat overturned. It was dark and I couldn't find Suro in the water. I swam as deep as I could until my lungs screamed, but I couldn't find him. He wasn't good at swimming. Eventually I got myself to the shore. The sun was rising and I found Suro there, on the shore, where the water had dumped his body. Good lord, what have I just stumbled on? Oh my gosh, he's crying. The sun's dead. I've done alright in Missilin, I guess. I know a bit of magic and the local gentry pay me well for my scrying skills. I'm good at turning a profit on the grand exchange trades too. Anyway, I'm able to rent a room in Lumbridge and to buy food. I'm not being a burden on anyone. And there are no vampires coming out for my blood. I'm free. But I haven't forgotten my people in the east. There's one vampire there who runs the place she calls the Theatre of Blood, challenging humans to face monsters in her arena. My husband went there trying to win freedom from blood gatherers by surviving her arena, but he never returned. No one does. So now I pass my spare time by scrying on the Theatre of Blood, watching other adventurers there. You can have a look if you like. Cool, that's interesting. I'd like to have a look in your ball, but I need to empty my inventory first. What is this about? Is this person new? This is very interesting. Bit of a, an awful story we just read there. So the poor woman's lost her husband, lost her son, trying to escape Mauritania, and now she's just standing in the Grand Exchange with a ball in her hands. Let's scry. Clear out everything you're carrying and make sure you're not sick or poisoned. Oh, is it literally a to deposit everything? Right, let's try it now. Observe a specific party, observe a recent party. No recently created parties available to view. What is this? So I guess that's for like viewing a group of people that are doing the Theatre of Blood raid. But is she new? I feel like I have never seen this person before and why is she there? What's changed for her to be there? Anyway, I got completely distracted. We're going to the Gnome Stronghold uh, to pick up Toad Legs. I have no idea what I've just stumbled on there, so we're going to leave that. Uh, I think the Toad Legs are just here. Is this, this them? Swamp Toad. Huh, is this not it? Or can I get the Swamp Toads and then... Yeah, remove legs, here we go. Perfect, right, cool. So we only need a single inventory of this, and then we rip all the legs off, and we are good for another secondary. All right, there we go, full inventory. Let's get removing on these. Oh, can I just spam click the corner? I can, nice. Cool, there we go. Right, that is another one done. Um, next on the list is snape grass. So we need to go back to Waterbirth Island, I believe. I have some snape grass seeds, but I didn't plant them and I can't be bothered to wait. So I think I'm going to go back to Waterbirth Island. I think I've probably found some other spawn locations recently, uh, but I can't remember them. I don't feel like I know any other ones at the moment. I kind of feel like the Waterbirth Island spot is the only one I really know. So we're going to stick with what we know. I'm just going to run to the bank real quick, grab my Graceful and my teleport route to get to Camelot and also drop off all these toad legs. Right, let's head to Waterbirth Island. I've got 20k on me because I believe I need to pay 1k to get to Waterbirth Island still. Um, but let's head over there and start picking up some snake grass. Right, so here we are on Waterbirth Island. Um, I didn't need the 1k, so it must have been either a one-off payment or I've done a quest that means I don't have to pay anymore. Don't know what's happened there, but we only need about 16 of these, but I'll just get a full inventory. And then we can head and grab the last few, which are buyables. And I've just realized one of them actually is in the gnome stronghold, so I should have got that earlier. Oops. And then we're done. We can start making potions and see where we're at. And then after that, I think I might try some herbivore or something like that to get some more herbs. Quite excited for that. All right, last one. There we go. Right, let's get out of here. So the last two are chocolate dust and eye of newt, both buyables, which is great. Let's stick those in the bank and let's head back to the gnome stronghold to get the chocolate dust. 
Right, if I remember correctly, there is a shop, I think just this guy here, Hulo, who sells like 10 at a time. So I'm just going to down some energy potions to get my run back so I can run back and forth and then just buy some. I only need 75, I think, so this should not take long at all. I have no energy potions. I don't know why I thought I did, um, but we're going to walk it, I guess. I probably should have dropped off my runes, but I am not thinking straight right now. Right, let's trade him. Has he got it? Yes. Oh, yes. So he sells... 10 dust and then also chocolate bars which is great so we can just do an infantry at a time all right i think that's enough isn't it yeah that is easy enough right so we can grind that up at some point quickly um but lastly we have eyes of newt which are the easiest to get i think we can actually just go to berthorpe i was thinking of going to port Sarim first but i actually think that we can go to berthorpe and i think we can get it from sanfew or sanfew's mate in the same building as him the herb law shop i think they sell them and at the same time i'm going to buy some vials of water because i don't know if i've got enough and then after that, we can get to the most exciting part, which is actually making all these potions and seeing how much XP we're going to get. We're probably going to make all these potions and get about 3,000 XP, not even make it to 57, and have to do this over and over again for the next seven weeks of my life. If you can't tell, I don't enjoy this skill. I now deeply regret the 30k XP that I took from the Legends Quest reward and put into prayer when I could have put it into Herb Law. That was clearly a fundamental mistake. Right, I think it's this guy, Jatix. Is this him? Yeah, here we go. Look at that. I have new pack. Right, let's buy like five of those. And vial of water. Let's get 50. Let's pop these open. Lovely jubbly. Right, that is easy enough. Now, let's go to a bank and start making this. For whatever reason, I just feel like Camelot is the place to herb. I'm going to grab my farming gear. So I look the part. Look at that. And now it's just a case of making everything. I think what I'll do first is I'll just prepare all my secondaries. So the only thing I need to do is grab a pestle and mortar and then I'll grind up my unicorn horns as well as my chocolate dust. So we'll spend a bit of time doing that and then we'll have all of our secondaries prepared. Then I'll make all the unfinished versions of the potions. So basically just mixing the herbs into potions. And then from there we can go back to my spreadsheet and look at what potions I actually need to make. So we'll be back in a bit. Okay, there we go. We've got all of our secondaries done. Now, as I said, it's time to mix our unfinished potions. So we're going to make all of these that we can into potions. As you can see, I've got a couple more grimy herbs. We've got about 27 more guams, some more morentil, some taromin. All the grimy ones are ones I've collected from hill giants recently. So we can clean those up as well. We probably won't have the secondaries for all of them, but we'll have some. So let's get making on some potions. Okay, there we go. I think we've mixed every single potion. I've just reorganized my bank a little bit to put the unfinished potion below the herb. So I've got this quite nice little process going on here. Um, and now it's time to just mix them. So I'm getting the spreadsheet back out and I'll start with the highest one. So for example, limpwort roots can go into qualms or they can go into taromin unfinished potion. So I'll start off with the higher ones obviously to get the more XP and then move on to the lower ones. And that's the same with Eye of Newts. I can use them on Irrit Potions or Guam. So I'm going to go through that way, just uh, start using all the potions up and then uh, see where we get to. I'm quite intrigued to see how much XP we get for this. So let's get my Limps out and my Quam Potions. And then we should make, what does this make? Super Strength Potions. That's actually going to be really cool. 125 XP, that's nice. So yeah, Super Strength, that's cool. So I'm going to have some Super Potions for the first time on the account, which is going to be very nice when it comes to bossing and things like that. Nice, that's them done. Now let's do some toad flax with the frog legs and we can make agility potions, which don't seem to give us much, but we'll still take it. So we start off at about 13K XP away from 57 herb law. I'm really intrigued to see where we get to with this. In fact, what does an agility potion even do? I'm assuming it's gonna boost my agility, but how much buy? Let's just drink one of these. We're currently 64, 67. That's not bad, a three boost. Might be good for some shortcuts here and there. Right, now let's make the classic prayer potion. Haven't got many Ranars, unfortunately, but we'll take any prayer potions we can get. And that is 57 Herblore. We can now make potions of magic essence. Never heard of that in my life. Right, that's all those done. Now then, this one I'm quite excited about. The Avento and 
Mortmire Fungi, because this makes super energy potions. Uh, I'm not going to drink them yet. I'm assuming they just boost my energy up, but these are going to be so good in the account. Running around is still one of the in most annoying things that we do. And I don't think I don't think these these definitely don't work like staminas because stamina potions are obviously the most overpowered ones. They're the ones that give you like a slower rate of run, I believe. So it's like your run goes down at a slower rate. I think these ones will probably just regen my energy maybe for 20 or 30 rather than 10, which I believe the normal energy potion is. But running around with these can be so good. And it's giving a nice amount of XP as well. All right, there we go. That's one more done. Let's tick that off the list. Right, now we've got Irrits and Eye of Newts, which is gonna be our super attack potions, which is very cool. So we have super attack and super strength potions now. So we'll be back in a bit once we've made all of these. All right, these are the last two Irrit potions. So we have done all of our super attacks. And for some reason I had it in my head that I needed 62 Herb Law. Uh, I actually need 59. I think I've been at this grind for a little while now. It's been weeks since I first started killing hill giants and stuff. Um, I got it confused with my farming requirement that I needed and obtained so yeah we only need one more level uh, and about 18k xp so we should definitely have this in the bank with all of these that I need to make um, but let's just tick irrits off the list and now we can make some energy potions using my Harrowlanders so this is chocolate dust again all right we're coming to the end of the Harrowlander potions now so we've got a nice amount of energy potions which will always be good to have in the bank let's just tick these off the list right I think it's now on to my Marentils, which I also have the ground unicorn horns for. I can't remember what this makes. What does this make? Ah, oh, anti-poisons. Okay, that's pretty nice. All right, and this is the last inventory of making anti-poisons. We have just about 7k to go, and I think it is time to move on to my Taromins and my strength potions, so using up these Limpwort roots. So as you can see, I've got a bit of a disparity in terms of secondaries. I've actually still got some Marentil potions left. I didn't kill enough unicorns, but we've got enough here easy to get the level. We're going to make all the potions we can, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be uh, maybe even get to 60. I'm not too sure. The Guams and the Taromans, I don't think they gain a huge amount of XP. I think Guams give 25. I think it's 50, actually. That's not too bad. So this will be a nice chunk of XP, uh, but at least we'll get to the 59 requirement. That is the main thing we're here for. Here we go. We're coming up to the level. There it is, 59 Herb Law. With that, we can now make Super Strength Mix and clean Snapdragons. This is what we've been after. I just looked and when I first found out I needed a Snapdragon and a Valencia Moss, that was 20 days ago, 20 real life days ago, almost a month. I've been grinding out farming and Herb Law and it has not been fun. Anyway, let's get my Snapdragon out, get all of those and clean. I'm going to leave a couple grimy just in case for whatever reason I need one. Don't think I will, but now we can actually make the fucking potion that we need. Right, what was it? What do we need? Um, it was Valencia Moss, Snapdragon, a bucket of Super Compost, and a pair of Saccateurs. Oh, so we just take that to the person. Okay, right, so pair of Saccateurs. Wait, no, that's Shears. That's the wrong thing. Let's grab the Snapdragon to start. Valencia Moss, uh, Super Compost, and let's go and grab some saccateurs from my leprechaun. Oh my God, I just cannot believe how long this took. Farming and herb lore are easily the worst skills, in my opinion, from an Iron Man perspective. Like herb lore, as I've mentioned before, you just buy it all on a main. So I've never really had to do this, but I'm, I'm really happy with 59 herb lore. That is a level that I thought I wouldn't really get. I'm sure it's gonna get higher in the future. I'll probably need it for another quest, but I think going forward, the thing that is quite funny, the thing that I took so much time doing was getting limp work roots from hill giants, and I barely even used them in the end. I don't have any saccateurs. Oh dear, okay, where can I buy some from? What do I normally use? I'll just buy some from this person. Yeah, so I think it's just the secondaries that take a long time, I'll just disregard. So limp roots, for example, unless I'm farming them, I'm just not gonna hunt them down unless I find some other source of them. But I think I really wanna do some herbivore at some point and get my hunter level even higher and also get loads of herbs. I'm going the completely wrong way, aren't I? I don't know why I'm walking to Draenor. I'm meant to be going to the little shed here. But yeah, I quite like to do herbivore, I think, get some herbs from that and then just uh, make some of the more higher level potions. But we don't need to worry about that for now because we've got 59 herb lore, we have our snapdragon and we can finally continue this quest. So I just got back here and I realised I'm in the completely wrong place. I need to take this to the nature spirit, not to the nurse. This is how long it's been. I just completely forgotten what I'm actually doing. So let's grab our runes to get to the rock and let's head to the nature spirit. 
All right, we're back here. We finally have all the stuff we need. I genuinely thought at times this would not be possible. I think the Valencia Moss was worrying because I'd completely forgotten what it was and where the source was. The Snapdragon I always knew you could get, but it just needed a lot of work to get it. And for whatever reason, everything else I tried just didn't seem to drop it. But this has been a hell of a grind. I'll be honest, this has been a in grind. Yeah, I'm, I'm just happy we're here. We can talk to this guy. Oh, I forgot my ghost beak amulet. Oh, fuck. Hell, okay, right. We're walking back to Canifis. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Right, let's go back. I don't think there's anything else I need. Just ghost speak amulet to talk to him, right? I think that's it. Okay, we'll be back in a bit. All right, we've got the ghost speak. I thought this was a good opportunity as well to test the super energy potion. So let's wait till this goes to zero. Nice. Okay, what does this restore it by? 20. I was hoping for 30, I'll be honest, because I think the normal energy potion here is 10, right? Let's just try that. Yeah, that's 10. So it's only double. I mean, that's still good, right? It's better than nothing, but I was hoping for it to be slightly better. I think, what's stamina potions? What level do you need for those? They're going to be something crazy high, aren't they? 77. Yeah, that's a way off. That's nice, though. It's nice. It's 60, 60 energy per potion, which is quite good. I guess if you decant them, it's 80. So this will speed things up, but you just get through them so quickly. Whereas stamina's, you take a sip and it lasts for like three minutes or something like that. Anyway, we've got the Ghost Beak Amulet. Now we can finally get, I think it's Magic Saccateurs. These are where you get the green Saccateurs, right? And then you can fight the Tangle Root boss. And I'm in the drink. Right, let's talk to him. Hello, mate. I need your help enchanting a pair of Saccateurs. I need them to fight a Tanglefoot. Your information is correct. Saccateurs that have been blessed by a nature spirit are the only weapons that can harm such a terrible creature. I should be glad to help you. Do you have all the required items for the ceremony? I do. I have everything right here. Then let us begin. Whoa, cutscene. That was cool. Look at that, we got the blessed saccateurs. Good luck with your upcoming battle. Nice. And this helps with farming, I believe, as well. I think they give like a bonus to how many crops you can harvest from each one. Look at that. Right, where do we go now? The nature spirit has enchanted a pair of saccateurs for me to use in my battle with Tanglefoot. I think we just go back to the Xenaris land. I think he's, it says there's someone near the cosmic altar. Um, yes, it's here. This is it. Yeah, Tangle Feet, here we go. So I think we have to go through this way. I think that's it, we just go and kill it now, right? I don't think it's a tough boss. I'm hoping the challenge of this quest was actually just making them in the first place. But I'll go and grab some food and some armor, just to be on the safe side. And I'm really bloody hopeful this unlocks fairy rings. I have a feeling that we might need to start the next quest to get fairy rings potentially, but not complete it. But I'm not 100% about that. Although I do now have all the requirements for it, so I might just go ahead and complete it. Although it's an experienced quest, maybe there's a boss battle or something in there, that'd be quite fun. Right, let's uh, drop this stuff off. And this is a nice uh, chance to use my new super attack and super strength potions, which is exciting. Yeah, I think it's just down here somewhere. I can't quite remember, but I know that they definitely said it was near the Cosmic Altar at some point, which is just down here. How do we get in there? There we go, squeeze through a gap in the wall, that looks like it. Can we go through these agility shortcuts at all? Oh, we can. Nice. Oh, we've got a hard task in the Lumbridge area. Right, so here's some little... Oh, hello. I've received orders to let you through if you want. Good luck. We're in. Some little baby Tanglefoot. Where's the big guy? She was going to be up this little circular area. I wonder what these baby Tanglefoot drop. Is that him? There he is. Let's just fucking start doing him in, I guess. I don't know what he uses. It looks like melee. So we'll pray that. I'm stabbing at the moment. I don't know what the... If it's stab or slash. Oh, that's a big hit. Yep, this looks like good stuff. This feels like a pretty easy boss fight, to be honest. He's not doing any damage through my protection prayers. There we go. Oh, what's that? Queen Saccateurs. I'm now getting attacked by the little guys. So what do these guys drop then? I assume I can only hurt these guys with the Saccateurs as well. Leaves? What's leaves? A pile of leaves. Didn't know that was even an item. Do they all drop that? Yeah, they just drop leaves. What does that do? I've never seen this item before, I don't think. That's very interesting. Anyway, we've got the Queen Saccateurs, so let's go back and give them to her. And hopefully we're done with this quest. I do feel like there's a high chance that it's actually not this quest that I get the fairy rings from because I don't know how they're going to squeeze that into this quest right now. Like, hopefully giving this back saves the queen. She'll be all happy. And then what? Maybe maybe they just give us access to it from that point onwards. That would be great. God, I did not expect this quest to take as long as it did. It's a shame I haven't really kept track of how many hours I've been in this quest for, but it's been a long, long time. And yeah, over two weeks of actual real time. Right. What do we do? Go and use these on the Queen? I need to take them to the Fairy Godfather. Oh, for God's sake, I've walked the wrong way. Why wouldn't the nurse want these? All I've been doing is going the wrong way. 
Where is he? There he is. Let's talk to him. I'm glad to see you back. I was worried that Tanglefoot would have killed you too. You needn't worry. I've managed to kill it. So did you get back the Queen's magical powers? I retrieved this pair of enchanted saccateurs. I think they must contain the Queen's missing magic. I'll give them to the healing fairy. She'll soon be strong again. Hey, there we go. 3.5k farming, 2 quest points, 2k attack, 1k magic, and some magic saccateurs. And we did not unlock access to the fairy rings. So I think we need to do the next quest. As always, thank you so much to all those that you can see on screen here who keep the channel going with their support via YouTube memberships. As usual, a massive thank you to ASDZXC404, This Not Dog, Thior Bjornsson, Jack, Itchiest Bug, Renak, Jax, Sleek Fabs, Patriotic Skull, Josda, Timothy Wisenand, Wineye, Teeters, Master of Reality, Carter Parry, Kunai, Some Commoner, Sloth337, Riley Ghoul, Corey, Kaiser Keej, Jimmy Dory, Kiki, Kachow, I'm Judgment, Gib50, A Giant, Bave, Beetle Guard, Morgan Gibbert, Gadget, Timothy Chen, Liam Arendt, Cat Planet, Mandeep Bessie, Gum Knuckles, Jack Church, Dracovian, Devosaur TV, Michael Elvram, Coupon John, Newt, Frog Go Boom, MTB Pat525, A Soapy Dog, Big Daddy Kyle, That Iron Meme, William, Thundersnug, Solid Snake24, Hector Rose, Inos, Snack Pop, Midnight Tinge, Icot, Johnny13, Backlash, Mike, Tarun Samurai, Barty, Inkspot, Ed Simpleton, MaxDong420, My Prey, for subscribing to the Quest Helper plugin tier of membership. Thank you all again.